previously. Avatar. I've plotted every move of this day. And the only way we win is together. No, it still hurts. The wounds are fresh. <laughs> the awakening. Is he growing hair? What in the heck? I didn't know he could grow hair. <laughs> what happened? He looks good. Aren't you cold? I've got a lot on my mind. Mm. It's been so long. Damn, his hair just gets better and better. <laughs> what has become of my life? Remember when this series used to be deep? Season three is just hair. It's gonna be all hair and romance. I wonder how I have changed. <sighs> I just asked if you were cold. I didn't ask for your whole life story. That is not how you play that. She's not the one for Zuko. I hope. Stop worrying. That was forward. I like your hair. Right? Hair? Maybe we should go upstairs. You need a healing session. Oh, that lightning. And the Earth Kingdom fell! Azuma's agents quickly overtook the entire city! This is a really cool way to do exposition. These sinister ladies is telling us what happened. Securing our victory! Yeah, they're extra vulnerable to it too because there was no war in Bossing Se, supposedly. So there was nothing they could do to prepare. Lies make you weak. Your prince has returned! Ooh, this should be good. Oh, they're cheering him on. Oh no. Man, that's such an interesting moment because here it is. It's what you wanted. He didn't look too happy. I would feel quite happy though. I, like, I feel like that's pretty much the final blow. Suddenly getting that thing I always wanted and getting that feedback. Wow, people love me. People really like me. That just sets me back. Way back. I have so many mixed feelings about Zuko being there. I don't really blame him for doing that and making that choice. It's a whole life of built up values and it's his family it's being at the pinnacle of the world that's seductive it's hard not to choose that but i think you know there's kind of this crack now in his idea of what that means once you start having doubts they have a way of resurfacing in strange ways the earth king decided he wanted to travel the world in disguise I'm not completely alone bosco good for him we've been working on a modified version of the invasion plan it's sokka's invasion plan seems like there's something going on here you're being boarded what the heck just stay quiet until we're safely across the ramp. Then we'll see. Oh god. <laughs> it's off to the rescue again. Oh, what you wasted no time. Oh my god, you just bend that metal. <laughs> Bended that metal real good. <laughs> I can't even speak English. Oh, it's the ducklings. The avatar's dead. Unless you think he somehow miraculously survived. I'm a little bit confused about their relationship. Does she have another angle? I don't know. It, it kind of seems like she cares about Zuko on some level. Unless she's using him for something that I don't see yet. Like, it just seems like she wants him back in the family. There's something humanizing about that, maybe. Damn, I guess she is the most powerful waterbender now that I've seen. Things couldn't get much worse. Well, that was nice. Thank you, Rayquaza. I'm not going out if I can't wear my arrow proudly. And come on, be practical. I can't help but think that a lot of this reaction he's having is to the fact that his own vulnerability was just exposed. I've said since the beginning that Aang always feels kind of under under leveled, to use a game term. He always seemed to think like because he's the Avatar, things are going to work out and he'll he'll be able to take care of business and defeat the Fire Nation. But it never really felt right to me because of what happened with Azula. That is a really grim reality that's hit him right in the face or in the back. That fight with Azula completely altered the course of his destiny. But now I know I need to do it alone. That just feels like him lashing out and being frustrated more than it does, you know, actually making sense. Is there anything you need? Dinner? I need to redeem myself. I need my honor back. Oh man, that's hard because once you start thinking like that, you end up in this downward spiral when you are forced to confront your own inadequacy. Your first instinct is to go out and prove those feelings wrong. Doubling down on the actions that reveal your flaws just makes things so much worse. Especially for Aang, because he's actually in danger. Right now, he's completely emotionally driven, and so he's vulnerable. Oh. Oh no. Yep, there's that desperation. And interestingly, here you have Zuko, who <laughs> seems to be on the verge of getting some kind of honor back. Like, that's what Azula has offered to him anyway, right? Azula's offered him honor. This is Ozai. Whoa, it's a big moment. You have redeemed yourself, my son. Wow, 
welcome home. He's so handsome. I don't know why my first thought was to talk about his physical appearance at that moment, but he's not what I expected at all. And he welcomed his son back, which I think is fascinating. Because a long time ago, I said something like that he was doing the best he knew how to do. Unless there's going to be some twist where he's tricking Zuko, that seems to be the case. He just took his glider and disappeared. How can you just leave us behind? You're talking about me too, aren't you? That was very observant of him. I understand why you left. And I know that you had to go, so why do I still feel this way? Aw. I'm really glad that she put it that way. It speaks really well of Katara that she has those feelings, but is able to see her father's side as well. I thought about you every day I was gone. Right, like he made a huge sacrifice too, obviously. As a kid, your parents are your whole world, and you form your identity around them and their approval. You don't understand until way later, if ever, that your parents are human beings. They're just older versions of you that also have their own journeys of their own. So it was undoubtedly a really difficult choice for her father to leave them behind, but it's also really understandable. And Katara's at the age where she can see that. She can live, she lives in both worlds. That feeling from when she was a child has, has stayed with her until now. It carries forward in time until you deal with it. But she's also been through so much with Aang and she understands the idea of responsibility that she understands both sides of it, which is really nice writing and is very refreshing. It's, it enriches her character in a way that we can really relate to. Rather than her just being straight up angry with her father, why did you leave me? I don't understand, you know? That kind of thing is sometimes annoying as an audience because you feel like, oh, just get over it and look at the situation. But she sees it clearly. She has matured a lot on her journey with Aang and Sokka and everyone. You've slayed the Avatar. What did you hear? Azula told me everything. You can always count on Azula to have an angle. I figured if I gave you the credit, you'd have nothing to worry about. Unless, somehow, the Avatar was actually alive. All that glory would suddenly turn to shame. What the heck? Speaking of reading people, she figured that out? That's amazing. I'm not gonna make it. You have failed, Anne. You inherited my problems. You already saved the world. Oh, it's you, eh? Thanks, Yue. Nice to see you. I have so much to do, but you'll have our help. It's better for now that no one knows I'm alive. You gotta just grow bangs. That's kind of like a tombstone for Aang's old self. Big metaphor there with the stick. His old identity being consumed by flames, death and rebirth. This was kind of a spiritual rebirth for Aang, transforming him into something that is more mature, more adult. Let's go to the next episode. The Headband. <laughs> of course he's picky. <laughs> they look great. I like it. Nice designs. Or as they say in the Fire Nation, stay flaming. Do they say that? Greetings, my good Hotman. Hotman? Hotman? If history is any indication, they have always exposed themselves within minutes of every infiltration. It couldn't be more obvious that you don't belong here. Next time you play hooky, you might want to take off your school uniform. <laughs> and goes to Fire Nation school. I'm with it. I like it. Interesting. Living with the people. My name's Anji. I like your headband, by the way. Anji, you don't have to babysit a new kid. <laughs> what the hell? Ang's been in this high school for five seconds, and he's already in a love triangle with a jock. Good job, Ang. We were on our way to play hide and explode. You want to come? This is the first time Aang's had a normal life since he was with the Wind Nomads, playing with all his friends. And it's something that he so desperately wants, and it's the reason why he didn't really want to be the Avatar. And now he's getting it in the Fire Nation of all places. That's kind of cool. I got invited to play with some kids after school. <laughs> after what? <laughs> I enrolled in a Fire Nation school. That's great. They should all enroll. They could do a whole side season of the four of them in Fire Nation school. Saved by the Fire Bell? Fresh Fire Prince? I got nothing. Boy meets fire world. Okay, I'll stop. I'm going in for a visit, and no one is going to know about this. Oh, he's using the Iro. It's the prison. Hmm. Wow. When Iro is pissed at you, you know you messed up. I guess Zuko's having some doubts. Every minute I'm in that classroom, I'm learning new things about the Fire Nation. He just wants to be there. He's just having fun. Come on. You're crazy, and if you weren't in jail, you'd be sleeping in a gutter. And Zuko's talking to himself a little bit there. His own anger projected onto Iro. Fire Lord. Bob. Since it's obviously hilarious to mock our national oath, we'll begin with a pop quiz on our great march of civilization. I would not do well in this environment. <laughs> I feel like in real life, Aang would be super popular in this school. 
He's just funny. He's counterculture in the perfect way. It's not pretentious. He just is that way, and it's refreshing for everybody who's in this terrible school. Being the class clown is not always something that you respect. Sometimes it's just people making an ass of themselves. He does it in the right way, where it's endearing. You know, I can say as a teacher, it's funny which students you end up liking. You definitely have favorite students. I definitely have favorite students, without a doubt. And it's not the people you might expect. Like, it's not the students who get really good grades. It's the students who add something, especially students who add levity. I love students who bring a good energy to the class, and if you're someone who's, like, funny or decent or makes things more enjoyable in a way that's non-destructive, I'll forgive any amount of, like, inadequacy in academics. You know, as a teacher, you're human. You want to enjoy your job, too, and it's nice when people make things better. Nobody shows my auntie anything, especially movement. <laughs> Played yourself. <laughs> Bring your parents to my office after school. Oh my god, that guy's annoying. What was that smug grin? Because he got ang in trouble with his parents? What a loser. How is this guy popular? Don't you worry, Mr. Headmaster. I'll straighten this boy out something fierce. Not sure how that passed. You're so beautiful when you hate the world. <laughs> I don't hate you. Hey, you've been to visit your uncle Fatso in the prison tower. That guard told you. You did, just now. Damn, she's good. Just be careful, dum dum. She does seem to care about him on some level. Am I being fooled? I don't want to be fooled, but I do feel that way. I'm having fun for once, just being a normal kid. You don't know what it's like, Sokka. You get to be normal all the time. Huh? Oh. Listen, guys, I'm gonna throw them a secret dance party. Footloose. <laughs> That is such a Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell thing to do, too. It's a form of self-expression that no one can ever take away from you. But we don't do that here. <laughs> we don't do that here. This was the Camilla Finstrup. Who knew Twinkle Toes could dance? You know what's so great about this, really, is this is Aang's element. This is what he wants, and this is how we've seen him in the past with the Air Nomads. We know he's charismatic, and he's very social and outgoing. And it's nice to see him shine in what he is. He's been the Avatar, and he's had such a hard time, and he's gotten angsty and kind of mopey and troubled and dead and all these things and really it seems like all he wants is just to have this environment and so it's it's really refreshing it's heartwarming to see him playing with kids like i want that for him as a viewer i want him to like just yeah just chill here i admit it i have everything i always wanted but it's not at all how i thought it would be it's really interesting this comes up right now i think in order for there to be any kind of meaningful communication somebody has to have the question first there's this old idea of emptying your cup before you can receive any knowledge. The truth is, in order to be able to function in the world, we kind of have to take certain things on faith, and we have to have beliefs that allow us to function. The problem is that having these views and clinging to them very strongly prevents you from really expanding and getting new wisdom. And so when you talk to someone, basically you're just pouring water on a full cup. If they're getting it, they understand it conceptually. There's contact with the ideas, but it's not entering. It's just flowing over the sides. And so in a sense, it seems like true wisdom cannot really be directly passed. It has to be embodied as a person and then shared when appropriate. Trying to help someone or fix someone's problems is a futile exercise because of that, that phenomenon. People are somewhat blocked by the things they already believe. And honestly, that's probably a good thing because there's a never ending source of bad information too. You don't want to have your cup filled with just anything. You, you want to have something in there. It's just a matter of when, when can you create the space for something better to enter. And that's, that's a tough call to make. People have to make that decision for themselves. I've been thinking a lot about dogma recently, religious dogma. And the thought occurred to me that the dogma actually is not in the religion itself. In fact, you can probably take any major religion that's persisted over over time and probably there is wisdom contained within that religion there probably is connection to the divine in there the dogma comes when people connect with these texts or with these faiths and filter that information that wisdom through their pre-existing beliefs you end up with something that is not really the true essence, the true wisdom. But that's something that is internal, and it's not something that only religious people have, it's something that everybody has. That's true of even people who say they're scientifically minded. They're filtering science through their own beliefs, and that's why so often you find that science seems to specifically tailor to people's notions of how the world should be, rather than what the data suggests. True wisdom is, is lived and arrived at gradually over time through a process of asking small questions repeatedly and refining and honing yourself and slowly emptying things, removing things that are not of your true essence or your true value and opening that space for something to come in. But it's only at those moments that the master-teacher relationship or the mentor-pupil relationship 
has any kind of impact. And so finally coming back to Avatar in this long rant, we've seen Iroh pour wisdom onto Zuko repeatedly. Iroh is nothing but a flowing of wisdom. And Zuko's kind of like, mm-hmm. How can I go back to my father, right? Like he's not ready for it. This seems like the first time where what Iroh says might actually help Zuko because Zuko has finally arrived here. He has the lived experience, the lived knowledge of what his actions have led to and what it really feels like to get what he thought he wanted. And so now he's looking around himself and saying, wait a minute, something's missing. And his heart told him to go seek out Iroh. And so that is the moment and the only moment where he can actually get benefit from teaching. Forget it. I'll solve this myself. Oh, that's hard. I don't know, maybe Zuko needs to fall further. I mean, the further he falls without being destroyed, the more receptive he'll be. It's just, you're walking a dangerous line because he could completely fall through the cracks. In a way, throughout their journey together, he was a little bit too doting, too patient, too nurturing. It's good that Zuko reaps what he sows a little bit, I think. Wow, they look pretty good together. Yeah, if that's what you like. Oh, this is, this is the first time I remember seeing Katara jealous. Seems like Katara's coming around. I'm sure that makes all you Katang fans happy. You can't let me just have fun with my Zutara idea. All right, go with that. Look at him, he's such a charismatic guy, socially. <laughs> it's funny. And it feels authentic, it doesn't feel forced. It feels like he actually is charismatic. I'm not sure that I know how to take my hand. Okay. Yes. That is the first moment I feel like the romance between them is actually authentic because he's being a man. He's not relying on her to be his mother. He's like taking charge. It's nice. It's romantic. Everyone's watching. Don't worry about that. Let him watch. It's just you and me right now. Ooh, look at this Casanova over here all of a sudden. Yeah, see? No wonder. I didn't know she had all this like physical prowess. I know she's a great water bender, but... My little boy is growing up. <laughs> Did the right thing by telling me he did. Anytime, Headmaster, sir. Loser. Yeah. Are they covering for him? That's nice. Who are you looking for? Do you need something? Over here. Damn, this went from dance party to like violent overthrow of the government real quick. You can take off the mustache now. Oh no, I can't. <laughs> it's permanently glued to my skin. Way to go, Dancy Pants. <laughs> Flamio, sir. My Zutara dreams are burning faster than Aang's stick. I want you to find him and end him. Hmm. Speaking of falling through the cracks, it was really nice to get a little bit of humor after all we've been through recently. I love seeing high school Aang. It's so, so cool. It's so funny. Season 3 starting off quite nicely. I look forward to seeing you next time.